Hello friends, welcome to Knowledge Ninja Academy and in this lecture we are going to see semiconductors. So the semiconductors are having electrical properties which lie in between that of conductors and insulators. For example, one semiconductor is silicon or that is germanium. Then at room temperature these have partially filled conduction band, partially filled valence band and a very narrow energy gap approximately one electron volt between these bands. So here we will see the energy with respect to different bands for different materials. So for insulator the gap between the conduction band and valence band is more in semiconductor this gap is less and in conductor the conduction and valence band overlaps each other. So here when the forbidden energy gap is more so for electrons from valence band to go into the conduction band where electrons flow or the flow of electrons happen so that the the material will be called as conductor or in a conduction phase so at electrons from valence band to go to the conduction band these electrons need to have more energy when the energy gap is more we need more energy when there is energy gap less we need some less lesser energy than this and for conductor we have overlapping conduction and valence bands means we do not need any extra mechanism to, to, lay, uh, to make the electrons flow from valence to conduction because the electrons are in conduction band also. So it is very easy for conductor to conduct electricity or heat energy. Similarly semiconductors uh, comparatively have lesser property of conduction and insulators have very less property of conduction of electricity. So for electrons to flow from valence band to conduction band some energy that is heat should be provided. Then in terms of heat at in terms of temperature we will see at 0 degree Kelvin or 0 Kelvin no electrons are present in the conduction band for semiconductors. No electrons are present in conduction band. So semiconductors behave as perfect insulators. Forbidden energy gap is more here. At 0 degree uh, 0 Kelvin forbidden energy gap is more than what we see here. So as temperature is increased, the width of energy gap reduces. Some electrons jump into the conduction band. Semiconductors show some conductivity. So as temperature is increased, semiconductors would show some conductivity. Then electrical conductivity of semiconductors is in the range of 10 raised to minus 3 to 10 raised to minus 6 per ohm per centimeter. So now types of semiconductors we will see first is intrinsic second is extrinsic semiconductor. So intrinsic semiconductor is its pure form means a material or semiconductor in its pure form is called as intrinsic semiconductor. It is consisting of ideally impurities below one part in 10 raised to 12 for silicon and one part in 10 raised to 8 for germanium. In actual practice impurities can be more than these mentioned values. So another type of semiconductor which is useful to us is extrinsic semiconductor. So uh, process of doping is there first of all we will see. It's the process of addition of impurities to a pure semiconductor materials is called as doping. So 
Through doping, extrinsic semiconductors are made. Impurities addition is 1 atom per 10 raised to 6 to 10 raised to 10 semiconductor atoms. Now it either increases number of free electrons or number of free holes or number of holes. This impurity addition either increases number of electrons or number of holes. So how it increases? We have two impurities. One is pentavalent impurity addition, other is trivalent impurity addition. So for silicon and germanium, at the valence bands, at the outer shells, these, uh, these atoms have four electrons consisting. So for uh, if you use pentavalent impurities, so for, uh, for stability of uh, silicon, it needs four more electrons uh, in the valence band. Okay. So if it gets four more electrons plus one electron. So we have we have here one more electron after pentavalent impurity addition. So after doping with these n type semiconductors are formed. n type semiconductor has one extra electron. So electrons are majority carriers and holes are minority carriers for n type semiconductor. Then Trivalent impurity addition. Here we supply three valence electrons to the silicon or germanium atom. So, due to three valence electrons, one electron less than what it needs to be stabilized. So, we have here one more hole, or we can say absence of one electron. So, after doping, P type semiconductors are made. P type semiconductors have holes as majority carriers and electrons as minority charge carriers. Now, what is PN junction? We will see. PN junction is formed by attaching or adding P type semiconductor to an N type semiconductor by special fabrication techniques. So, it is Symbolically, we can show a PN junction as this. So, diffusion due to diffusion of free holes from P type and electrons from N type, a layer is formed called as depletion layer. This hatched, hatched layer is called as depletion layer, which forms a barrier potential. Now, biasing a PN junction, we will see. Connecting a PN junction to an external voltage source is called as biasing. It's called as it's a, the junction is called as a biased PN junction. Now, by applying the voltage, we can control the width of depletion layer. How? We'll see. Biasing allows us to control the resistance of PN junction and amount of current that can pass through it. So these have two types, forward bias and reverse bias. So we will see in detail forward bias. So a PN junction is here. The P type semiconductor or P type end of this junction is attached to positive terminal of a battery and N type end of this PN junction is connected to negative or ground connection of the battery. Here large amount of current flows if applied voltage is greater than barrier potential VB. This barrier potential of depletion layer. Holes are repelled by positive terminal and electrons are repelled by negative terminal here. P type semiconductor have uh, more number of holes. N type semiconductor have more number of electrons. So by attaching it to the P type to the positive terminal, these holes are being repelled due to similar charges and electrons are repelled from negative terminal to the 
towards the depletion layer. Due to this energy, some holes and electrons enter the depletion layer and recombine themselves. So these holes and electrons come towards this depletion layer. It reduces the width of depletion layer and also reduces the barrier potential. So this width of uh, width of depletion layer is reduced and the barrier potential which was set up at the start or fabrication it also starts reducing and this process continues and thus the current flows across the junction. Now reverse bias we will see when a PN junction diode towards the P part P part is connected to negative terminal and N type is connected to positive terminal here in this no current flows and the depletion layer increases in width and barrier potential VB also increases here when connected the holes are attracted towards the negative terminal of battery holes in the P type semiconductor are attracted towards the negative terminal and electrons in the N, uh, N uh, type semiconductor are attracted towards positive terminal so this thus the carriers are drawn away from the junction carriers are drawn away from the junction so the junction width and depletion layer increases in width and thus the barrier potential also starts increasing thus no electricity flow happens in reverse bias